Hey everybody, Jake here. There are two things that I like to do in life. Collect movies and go to movies and movie theaters. Combining the two into one hobby, I've had a really fun time doing recently. I like to collect, let me grab a big stack of them here. I like to collect my movie stubs. Whenever I go see a movie in theaters, I collect them because whenever I get the movie in my physical media collection, I like to have the ticket and put it into that movie. So today, that's what we are going to do. I have ticket stubs from the past year and a half, two years, probably like, I don't know, eight, ten that I finally have movies in the collection for. So we're going to just slip those in. I'll give you my two cents on some newer released movies. So uh, yeah, that's what we're doing today. If you like that idea, like, subscribe, follow, all that stuff, all that fun stuff. Uh, but yeah, let's get to it now. Okay, so the first movie that I have to show off today is a double feature that I saw around Christmas time. I always try to do that in the month of December, especially around the holidays, because there's always a lot of great movies in theaters. And the double feature I saw this time was Poor Things, which I do not have in the collection yet, but I just got my hands on the Iron Claw. What a stellar movie this was. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Zac Efron is great as the linchpin of the entire family. Jeremy Allen White was fantastic in here. Uh, Laura Tierney, always love seeing her pop up in these things. And you know what? Speaking of pop up, I will pop up letterbox reviews just sporadically every time I'm talking about this movie. Because this is me like a few months out. My letterbox reviews are me like right after the movie. Like as the credits are rolling when I'm in the theater, I'm the guy who is typing his thoughts and reviews out just because I want it fresh. I want the reviews fresh. Iron Claw, absolutely loved. Movie ticket, right here. Since this movie hasn't really technically came out in stores yet, I got this sent to me by Lionsgate. I was going to cut while I cut it open, but you know what? I will show you how I open up my movies, and some people might think this is gross, but I've been doing it ever since I was in high school buying my own stuff. I've got these uh, canines right here. Very werewolf vampire style. <laughs> I just, I got one of those sharp guys. And I pierce it because uh, that has always worked. And I don't know why I do that, but uh, I do. So, Iron Claw. Ooh, don't show off the digital code, that's for sure. But that's what the discs look like. Here's this. I'm going to put my movie ticket in here. And that's where it's kind of housed forever. Does it stink that there's no 4K option to get the Iron Claw right now? Yes. I will be honest, it absolutely does. But, uh... Do I think it's going to be a 4K of this movie? Also, yes. It might not be in the U.S. for a while. I could see, like, uh, Turbine Media coming out with a great edition. I could see A24, the website, coming out with a phenomenal edition like they did for Midsommar. Like, those big books or Marcel the Shell or all that stuff. But yeah, Iron Claw, pretty dang good movie. Next one up, we did Wrestling. Now let's go to another sporting movie with boxing. I have here... The 4K Steelbook for Creed 3. One, not, I guess, one of my favorite movies of last year. Uh, I think I rated it 4 out of 5, just like I did Iron Claw. I enjoyed this. It's a little bit formulaic, but a lot of the Creed Rocky movies are that way anyway. I liked this movie better than Creed 2. For me, Creed 2, I thought, leaned a lot on the Sly Stallone Drago of it all. And it just felt like Creed was a secondary character in his own movie. Getting back to Michael B. Jordan, and now things that we know about Jonathan Majors, he makes a very good villain, that's for sure. I got this sucker at Best Buy. Uh, back when they were closed, I guess they're still closing, but this was like a month ago as of this recording. $9.99 for this steelbook. Could not pass that sucker up. I have my tickets right here for Creed 3. Um, they forgot to rip it, so I have two right there. Creed 3 goes in. Like so, there is ticket number two. We're just going to speed along with these. If I have something to say about it, I will. If not, we're just going to keep on going. Uh, this movie, not a lot to say, but I do have a decision. And speaking of speedy, it's Fast X. Now, my decision is, um, I get things sent to me from studios. I got sent an Icon Edition, and I got sent a Steelbook. Both 4K. I don't know which one I want to put it in, but I do want to show off the packaging of the Icon Editions. They have stopped making these, unfortunately. Um, from what I've heard from my sources, they didn't really sell as well as what they were hoping. These remind me a lot of the Diamond Lux packaging that used to come out like 10 years ago. 
fell in love with those a couple of years ago. I started collecting those. So when I heard that these were coming out, uh, it's not made out of the same material, but it's got the same concept. Like it's a very thin, but it has a lot of detail on there, a lot of pops. There's just a lot of imagery and it looks unique. It's just unique packaging. And I absolutely love it. There is the inside there. My, my only thing here is that there's no good place to put the movie stuff, the movie ticket. Um, so I'll open up the steel book and I will put it in the steel book just because I have all the other steel books in this racing line. And I'll show you that in a second. Uh, my thoughts on fast X, it was fine. It was better than F nine. I did not like F nine at all. That was like one of the weaker, like second weakest in the entire franchise. Fast X had Jason Momoa, and that goes a long way for me. He was amazing, and he was eating up every single ounce of screen time that he was on. I could not get enough of Jason Momoa in this thing. Here's the front and back. If you uh, if you have any of the Fast and Furious steelbooks, more often than not, it will be the ones that are kind of numbered right here on the spine. Inside, there has never been anything, and there is still nothing, which is a bit of a bummer, but you know what's there now? Ticket stub. Boom. Sliding it in. What do you think of Fast and Furious? FX. Fast X. I, it's like middle of the road for me. It's like five. I think I ranked all the Fast and Furiouses two on my letterbox. I'll, I'll throw that in here now. Um, next, oh, okay. <laughs> next up, I am wearing uh, the t-shirt for this movie. I absolutely love Mission Impossible. I've seen the past four or five in theaters. Um, I I didn't really get into the franchise until Gro Ghost Protocol. That was the first one I saw. And the only reason why I saw that in theaters was because they had... I saw it in IMAX, and before you go, before the movie started, they had the first, like, ten minutes of The Dark Knight Rises, and I just needed to. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll see some Mission Impossible movie, whatever. Loved that movie. Brad Bird directed the crap out of it. I liked how every installment was directed by a different director until they found Christopher McQuarrie and he's directed the past three. They've been very, very solid. Um, Dead Reckoning Part 1. It's not even Part 1 anymore. So this is very funny. On the packaging it says Dead Reckoning Part 1. It's just going to be called Dead Reckoning for every other re-release of this. Because uh, this movie at the box office didn't do as hot as what they were expecting. So they are just going to drop the Part 1 and name um, Part 8 whatever the next installment is, something completely different, which they should have done. I mean, that's what Avengers ended up doing anyway as well. They were going to be Infinity War Part 1 and 2, and they switched it to Infinity War and Endgame. So, uh, yeah, if Avengers did it, Mission Impossible should definitely do it. This Steelbook, it's okay. It shows uh, two of the more popular stunts. I just, I don't know if I'm a fan of the artwork that's on here, but I had to get the Steelbook. I absolutely had to. I'm not going to take that disc out, but I will take out this one so you can see what part of that looks like right there um two blu-rays one 4k and now it has one ticket stub right there Ooh, one thing about this steel book there's no uh clippies because the disc thing is here so this is just going to be kind of floating in the abyss of my uh dead reckoning steel book but that's okay Okay, floating around here. I would, um, I think I have rankings of the Mission Impossible movies too. I want to say this is like middle of the road. But there's a lot of solid installments. And I don't hate Dead Reckoning Part 1. Um, the scene with the train pulled right from uh, Uncharted 2. Like the intro scene of that video game. I'm okay with it because that playing that scene in that game was great. Watching that scene in this movie, also great. Next movie movie I'm not the biggest fan of, um, even though I've seen it three times now because I have kids. Elemental. Here is Disney's Elemental. I just, uh, I don't know, this for Pixar seemed very generic, very elementary, if, uh, if I do say so, I guess. Um, I don't know. I always just expect more elevated kid content from Pixar, and this one seemed very bare bones to me. The steelbook looks great. I, I love the artwork that they decided to go with on the front. The back is whatever, but that's okay. Here's the inside again, just popping with colors. That's the best thing about this movie is all the visual flares. The story itself is just, it's so bare bones. But the steelbook release looks great. And I saw this once in theaters a couple times, once, once in theaters, once in Disney Plus, once on 4K. 
The one time we did see it in theaters, it was at the drive-in. I love going to the drive-in. Try to go at least a couple of times a year. They played Barbie in Elemental. We, my wife and I had already seen Barbie. I'm like, okay, the kids can see it. I have a seven and five year old. That, that's good enough for them. So we went to see Barbie in Elemental and it was a dang fun time. So now that ticket will be in this steel book forever. Okay, we have another Icon Edition to show off. Again, I am very lucky to have Studio send me some things. This is The Flash. And I enjoyed The Flash. There was a lot of backlash on The Flash, but I had a fun time with it. Are there some graphical elements that aren't the best? Sure, but that's a lot of this superhero genre. I'm also a big, like, time travel guy and, like two different versions of yourself kind of meshing in the same universe I am a sucker for all the time. But isn't this packaging cool? I think that just looks amazing. It pops. And I I know that these cost more than your average 4K did. Like they're trying to go the steelbook route um, just to see if they could get some more of your bucks. And unfortunately, this one did not. But look how cool that looks, man. I just think the... You can't, it's hard to market this because the pictures never showed off how great these look in person, unfortunately. Um, I almost forgot to put the ticket in there. I saw this in theaters, of course, had a very fun time with it. Um, with these icon editions, I'll show off one more thing. Like there's no, there's no good place to put the ticket. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of put it where the Blu-ray is because I will watch this movie on 4K. I don't think I'll ever pop this Blu-ray disc in. So this is going to be sticking with the Blu-ray disc right there. Ticket. Boom. Did you guys like The Flash? I think I gave this one a three and a half out of five, if I remember correctly. I don't know. It was fun. Um, it didn't take itself seriously at all, which I thought was a nice breath of fresh air in superhero genre. I don't know. I, I, I liked it. There was some heart there, too. Next one. Not a lot of heart, I guess. A lot of gore in a movie that I've been looking forward to since, what, 2008, 2009? Thanksgiving. I love the trailer for Thanksgiving with Grindhouse. I watch it every single Thanksgiving. It's like what I do before I hang out with family. It's just like the perfect mood setter. I yeah, with, without a doubt, it's the best. Um, the movie I had a lot of fun with as well. Here, I got a. This is another one I haven't cracked open. There we go. And uh, yeah, I thought this one was another solid slasher flick. And uh, I have another slasher in here. I like this one more than that one. Spoilers for the other one. But uh, yeah, John Carver as a slasher icon, I thought was a very solid introduction into the genre that has a lot of iconic slashers. I don't know. I, I, I like this one quite a bit. Inside, if I can crack it, take the digital code out. Ooh, the disc has a nice little uh, Thanksgiving. That's exactly how the title card was in the trailer. Very cool. Movie ticket. Sliding it in. And I'm hoping you're seeing with these uh, movie tickets that I, I go to like three or four different movie theater chains on rotation. Some I do more than others, but uh, yeah. Thanksgiving. Fun, fun movie. If you have seen any of these movies, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let's start like a little rapport here because I'm always very interested to hear what other people have to think about movies that I've seen. I, I like talking movies. This next one, very happy. It just recently won Best Picture at the Oscars. That's Oppenheimer, baby. I have this in a Malco protector, one of their new acrylic ones. Back when this was very hard to find, I'm so happy that Walmart re-released it. I think I'm still going to keep it in this nice, hearty shell, just because this steelbook is so nice. If you have not seen it, you're in for a treat. And if you see it at your local Walmart, pick it up immediately, because you will not be disappointed, folks. Front and back right there. I think that's just things that I like about steelbooks. The artwork... It can be totally different, or it can be like simple yet striking and just Oppenheimer going in the smoke of an atomic bomb. Very strong imagery. And I also love how Christopher Nolan movies always have artwork on the discs, and I like it. The inside is just this picture of him looking through the window glass. Um, I saw this movie 
with my wife. I have two tickets right here. I see a lot of movies by myself. We have kids, so it's kind of hard to pick a time where we can both see something. Or she's okay with waiting until they come home. Because I have a lot of movies back here. She She's a homebody. I like the theatrical experience a lot. So whenever I have free time or I'm able to like sneak out for a couple hours, I like to do that. Um, I, I also stay up a lot later than she does. So it's just just something for me to do. And yeah. Oppenheimer was a very fun theatrical experience. My second favorite movie I saw of 2023. It was my favorite up until last month. Um, I don't have this movie yet either. I don't think it has a physical media release. Blackberry? Oh my god. That's streaming right now on Hulu. Yes, on Hulu. And that movie floored me, man. That movie was amazing. If you have not seen Blackberry, highest recommendations. Uh, a movie that I'm not going to recommend as highly because I've never really enjoyed a single installment in any of the, in any of his movies, I guess. That's going to be Thor, Love, and Thunder. I'm an MCU guy, so I'm going to go and see every MCU movie in theaters. Even if I like it or not, like Elemental, it was like pulling teeth. <laughs> I was almost falling asleep during that movie. Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania wasn't that great. The greatness of this movie, hands down, Christian Bale. All of his stuff, you're always captivated in what he's doing. The Lady Thor stuff in this was okay. The embossing and debossing on the steelbook here. That's great. That's very good. Um, I wasn't even a fan of Ragnarok that much. I thought that was very highly overrated when it came out. And I think people are starting to get a uh, Taika Watiti fatigue. Uh, Taika Watiti fatigue. Watiti fatigue. Watiti fatigue. That, that could be something. That's fun to say. Um, but I mean, man, Marvel knows how to put out a steelbook release. I will say Disney, Marvel, they don't disappoint that often. This one looks great, too. Um, I just wish the movie was a little bit better. I do want to watch this in 4K because I think the black and white scenes with Christian Bale would pop like crazy. And there's a whole bunch of uh, other uh, mystical elements with nice color pops that I think would do well in color as well. Thor, Love and Thunder. Again, nothing too crazy, but uh, there have been worse Thor films. There have been worse. And finally... The last movie ticket I have to put away is for uh, a franchise that I hope keeps on growing more and more. I I don't even want to say evolving because the first one I thought was damn near perfect for what it was trying to be. Second one, I'm talking about Terrifier 2. And uh, yeah. I think this one tried to do too much. Every a lot of people love this movie. I love the kills in this movie. A lot of very creative stuff here. Um, I think it's trying to add too much lore to Art the Clown when you didn't really need to. You just have a very creepy, creepy character here. Um, the kill in the first movie where someone gets sawed in half the wrong way. There's no right way, but uh, that one is wrong. Uh, one of the most iconic death scenes I've seen in a very long time. There are some iconic deaths in here, but what made the first Terrifier like go down very, very smooth is because it was like a quick, less than 90 minute run time. There wasn't a lot of thinking. You could just see, hey, this protagonist has to escape from art the clown who's trying to kill her very bare bones and basic and that's sometimes that's all i really want in a slasher when you're adding like little girl sidekicks and mystical bullshit that doesn't need to be in here i don't know i just i was i wasn't as big of a fan of this one as i was the first one but in preparation for this and hearing how people were losing their minds over terrifier 2 i uh I saw Terrifier 1, I saw All Hallows Eve, I just watched them back-to-back -back days in preparation, because I knew I wanted to watch Terrifier 2 in theaters. Um, I also have this on 4K, this is just a Blu-ray, here's another dilemma, Blu-ray 4K, I thought about putting the 4K disc in the Blu-ray steelbook, there's also a 4K steelbook that I don't have, and I also have, I guess I don't have Terrifier 2, I have the Terrifier This Is Art box set, no that does have Terrifier 2, I could put it in the umbrella, here, just a second. 
Okay, here's like one of the first umbrella pieces that I had in my collection. This is Art Terrifier set. It is great. As you can see here, it comes with one and two and All Hallows Eve, which is the anthology film that Art the Clown came from. So I have three different options to put. Ooh, I guess I could split this down. They didn't rip this one either. I could put two tickets. Here, let's do that. Let's, uh... <clears throat> Careful, Jake. Careful. Don't don't go crazy. Okay. I like this 4K artwork, so I don't know if I would just want to like get rid of it entirely. But hey, here, here's another. The last teeth are. Ooh, you hear? I don't know what it is. Oh, there was like a little bunch right there too. I pulled it out. There's something so satisfying about just digging in with your canines and going to town on these. I also bought this. This one and Thor Love and Thunder I bought at Best Buy for crazy dumb prices. This was eleven ninety nine in four K. Thor Love and Thunder was nine ninety nine again for the steel book. God, there's not a lot here. What would you do in this situation? Would you just take the four K, ditch everything else, and put it in one of the other two packages that I have? Um, I'll show the this is our Terrifier two part. Um, same artwork as this. I just don't know what to do. Ooh, but we have some blood splatter in the Australian version. Very cool to see. Um, trying to think of what to do. I think I really kind of just want to pitch this and put that in here. I might put it in the steel book, but for right now, I'm going to put one of the tickets inside of my umbrella entertainment box, and I'm going to put the other ticket inside of my steel book because the steel book has the best artwork hands down for sure um i might put the 4k disc in this a little bit later but that is everything that i have at the moment to put movie tickets in i have here i'll show off i've got a fat stack of movie tickets that i don't have yet in the collection black widow need to find but i want the steel book poor things um i want to save since I didn't receive that for review, I do want Poor Things in 4K because that just seems like a movie that would sing, would sing in 4K. TMNT Mutant Mayhem. The Steelbook is at Walmart, but every single Walmart I've been to has been sold out and I never got it at Best Buy. So I just uh, need to wait. <laughs> I need to wait until I can get that Steelbook and then that'll be housed. Um, I went to New Orleans last year. I had a free day. So I went to a theater to see a couple of movies Killers of the Flower Moon I saw, and I also saw David Fincher's The Killer, which is very cool that I saw it in New Orleans, because there's a scene that happens in New Orleans. The Killer is slept on so much. I feel like since the majority of people saw that on Netflix, they're kind of just saying, okay, this is just your average Fincher. Plays so well in a theater. Um, Infinity Pool, I don't have, I wasn't the biggest fan of this movie, so I don't know if I will ever own it in the collection, but the Steelbook does look nice for it. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Again, I was really hoping that something would be super cheap at Best Buy because I never got the Steelbook. I don't have that movie. I enjoyed that movie. I thought Sam Raimi directed the crap out of it. Bo was Afraid. I will probably never own in my collection. I love Ari Aster, but this movie was a huge swing and a miss for me. Uh, this is another Doctor Strange. And then Cocaine Bear. Uh, remember when everybody was really hyped to go see Cocaine Bear? There is one good scene in that movie that I might buy the movie if I see it for like $5. If not, I'm happy if I never see that movie again or own it in my collection. But those are all the movie ticket stubs but that I'm putting away this time. I'm going to see more movies. I'm going to buy more movies. Let's try to make this a, a thing and kind of continue on with it. Did you like it? Did you not? Do you not want to see this back? Let me know in the comments. If you watched this far, very grateful for you. Thank you for doing that. And until next time. I'll see you.